Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Got a guitar in for setup. Jim Whitsit. Whitsit brought this from Texas. And uh, we really just gonna do a setup on it. Get the strings lower, get the humps out of the neck. Uh, probably put a different saddle in it, possibly. And uh, anyway, when we're done with it, it's gonna play like a dream. So that's where we're headed. Come along for the ride. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, setup here uh, before I take it apart, and it's not horrible. It's it's on the edge of high. For bluegrass, this would be just about right, but uh, it's 90 thousandths there on the bass, and uh, probably closer to 80 on this. Yeah, it's it's about 80, 75, 80 uh, on that one. So that's really not bad. The setup, as far as it is right now, isn't too bad, but it's not flat. And because it's not flat, I'm sure there's some buzzing going on. And I don't know uh, if I can force any of that buzzing to happen, but... But it's, I can tell that it's, it's not just right. Like right there, it's, it's a little bit on the buzzy side, but not too bad. But anyway, we're gonna level all that out and recrown it, and we'll drop the action down even a little bit more, and... Um, that should take care of the whole thing. We'll clean up the fretboard, make the whole thing look like it's brand new. So here we go. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is do a leveling. And I'm, what I do is I go through it lightly first like this, and I can feel where it grab. And it's grabbing in a few places. It's, it's kind of rocking right here, as you can see. So it's, it's definitely got some high spots, and we're going to get rid of all of that. It's already better. It's just got, barely got any rock to it at all now. So after here, you just kind of fan it out so that it, it's kind of like drywall mud, you know. You got to, wherever you got your worst spot, you got to knock it down pretty good. And the rest of it, you fan out to that. Way they're all the same height so like right here it was really rocking bad before I mean like I could just rock it back like a rocking chair you know about, about to up red, red. Yep, red, right in there and you can see like right in here it's not taking off that much but right in here it's taking off quite right, a bit that's right. that's that lower spot you know let me look down at now and see what it looks like good that right there still looks a teeny bit high to me That ought to do it right there. I don't, I don't feel anything grabbing now. You can usually just feel it grab. It feels real good. I think we're in good shape on the flattening now. We'll move on to the next step. Okay, well I've got this good and level now, so I'm gonna use my uh, round over and round over all the frets. Now I'm using one that's a little bit bigger, but I've also ground the edges off of it. And I find that that works the fastest and does the best job for me. And I kinda, I kinda rock it a little bit as I use it. I'm not saying that's the best technique for everyone, but it works for me. These frets in this area are going to need quite a bit of rounding because we had to knock them down a lot. relatively rounded off uh, but I'm feeling the edges on several frets so I'm going to take this and work on it and because I'm going to be up close there I I don't think I'm going to hit the board but it doesn't hurt to just put a little tape on there I mean the top I mean not the board but you just put a little tape there like that and a little tape here because I'm going to be real close there when I'm filing the ends of these frets off. Yeah, 
ends are sticking out pretty good there. And then down through here, they're, they're sticking out some. I am a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this world of woe There is no sadness, no toil, no danger In that bright land to which I go There's still a little bit of flatness in these frets that had to be filed so much, but it's not enough to really make that much of a difference, but I'm just trying to get them a little bit more round. Next thing we're going to do is um, going to take and polish them up with some 600, and the 600 also helps round them off some more. And again, this is where you can go this way, but it's much faster to go this way, and this way helps round them off a lot more. It's the old ugly duckling thing. It makes it look worse at first, but it's just another step in the process, and you just have to go through all these different phases, you know? And then I, I go down and I, I do the same thing on the ends, and that way you won't feel anything on these ends with your hand grabbing your skin or whatever. And you can feel that on those ends otherwise. Oh, I think that's good enough for Jim's guitar. <laughs> Okay, so the next step is that we're going to take a single edge razor blade, and you could do this with other tools, but this is what I've gotten accustomed to using, and it works for me. Some people use the uh, thicker uh, utility knife blades for this, and that's okay, but I like the flex that's in these blades a little bit, but yet I'm using the heavier blades like this. These are the, I think these are nine or twelve thousandths. They're, they're heavier than your regular. Yeah, these are twelve thousandths. So you're, like your regular is about nine thousandths, and that's kind of flimsy. You can get these in different, in different gauges, so I recommend getting the twelve thousandths. This will level not only the fretboard itself, but even the inlays. Like this dot was sticking up high, this dot's down below the surface. I don't, I don't know if you noticed that, but that's the way they are, you know. Uh, but this kind of levels all that out and makes it look nice. I don't think I'm going to go as deep as this one is because that, that whole, that dot's down below the surface quite a bit. So I don't think I'm going to go all the way down to it. Though we could if we needed to. I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come home. Just go in over Jordan. I'm just going in over home. Up here, there's a little bit of fingernail damage that I'm seeing right through here and right through here, so I'm just trying to get that out. <laughs> So that takes care of that part. Now what we do is we'll go down through and clean up right at next to each fret to get rid of the junk that builds up right there. And I usually do one side, then I turn it around and do the other side. Jim came so doggone far, you know, just to have this done. I'm going to give him a little bit of extra treatment here. We're going to we're going to polish these and 
mirror these frets up like a mirror. I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. I'm just going over Jordan. I'm just going. going to film the rest of that but that's what I'm doing and you can probably see the uh, before and after effects there these first three have been completely buffed out compared to the other ones back here they're they're nice but the first three are just like mirrors well my friends we've got all the frets polished up you can see how shiny they are I think and the next thing I'm doing here is I've cleaned out the nut slot and I'm going to go ahead and put a drop or two of glue on this. The glue, it had been glued before, but it uh, obviously has popped loose. So I'm just going to take a drop of canopy glue. It's really good for gluing plastic and things like that and bone and different things to different materials. And I'm not putting very much in there, but I'm just putting enough on there to make it stick and wipe off any ex excess there. So Jim, what do you think about the shiny frets? Oh man, that, that looks like it just came off the factory floor right there. Yeah, I think it looks or really nice. Or better, probably yeah. better than the factory I think it looks floor. really nice. It's got, it, it, they just look perfect, really. So now I'm going to get the uh, Be Good Oil on here and uh, put that on. Is that what you oil the next uh, fretboard with? Yes. And it's what, called what? Be good oil. Be good. It it's a, it's a, comes from a Cling Spore Woodworking, and uh, I don't know where else you can get it, but that's the only place I've ever seen it. And uh, it's it's a food grade type of oil that you can put like you can even put it on salad bowls and things like that, you know. So it's non toxic, eco friendly. Yeah, all that good stuff. All those <laughs> all those buzzwords. <laughs> But I just rub it in like that. In fact, I'm gonna rub it in on the uh, bridge back here too, because I got more than I needed on this. Watching the leaves fall to the ground Just like my life, they're spinning around So there's what she looks like all prettied up. And we did the bridge to darken that up a little bit too. It just kind of darkens everything up. I, this saddle looks like it's micarta, and if it is, I think you'll be better with the antler than the micarta. So I'm gonna try to get it out of there. And it's down in there pretty far. Now that I've oiled that, I'm thinking that maybe I would want to, uh, maybe have to cut this down to lower this some more, actually. You've got an under saddle pickup here too, so. This uh, saddle, it's not bad, but it's got a little bit of play to it and it's got a lot of play lengthwise. So we'll make a new bone saddle and uh, make it fit that slot really well. We took the uh, pickup system out of this and uh, I think he's going to look into getting a uh, LR bag system that doesn't have an under saddle uh, pickup. Uh, the, the problem with this one is is that the, the saddle has to be cut so thin or, or so narrow or whatever the right word is, short, it's not tall enough because of that under saddle pickup. So we want to be able to put a taller uh, saddle in here and that'll help the sound and everything. It'll be a stronger saddle. It'll send this vibration through the top much better. This little flimsy saddle doesn't do as much for your sound. Well, anyway, he's looking into that. While he's looking into that, I'm going to be also inspecting the inside of the guitar because he thinks there could be a loose brace or something like that in here. Um, if you heard something rattling before, it could have been them wires, too. That's a possibility because there was a lot of wires in here. Looking at it right now, it looks pretty good, at least back in the 
the back part of the guitar. I don't see any obvious problem. But sometimes they're not obvious. Yeah, I do not see a problem on from the X bracing back. Let me look around on the front here and see if I see anything on the front of the guitar. I don't see anything obvious there either. I'm gonna reach in there now. I've inspected it by eye, but sometimes you have to feel them to tell. And I don't think there's anything loose, but I'm gonna feel them all and see if I can make anything wiggle. Feels really solid. Now I'll do my tap test. And this, I use the fleshy part of my finger and I put my ear real close to the sound hole. And I can usually tell if there's anything loose in there. I don't hear anything on the, on the top. I don't really think I hear anything for sure on the back, although there is something in this general area that sounds slightly different. Yeah, I think it may have just been the way I was tapping it. I don't hear anything now. I'm going to reach in there and feel the back braces now. Make sure I don't feel anything loose. I don't think there's anything loose in this. I think it's pretty nice. I think it's, I think it's good to go. I don't think there's any problem. Okay, well we've made our new saddle for this and of course I don't have it cut to shape yet. I've just got it to fit the slot. But I thought I'd just show you the difference here. This is the stock saddle that came with it. And I imagine this is the one that came from the factory even because it's uh, micarta. And you can see that it, it moves back and forth. And there's slop in it this way too, about two thousandths of an inch. It, it actually doesn't fit it horrible this way, but there's about a two thousandths of an inch slop that way where the saddle I make, I try to make them where they fit exactly. Not, you know, not close, but exactly. And so as you can see this one, it's, it fits down in there and it, it just perfectly fits. And you can see there's no space around it whatsoever. Now, the reason that's important for a bunch of reasons, it helps with your sound, but it also, if you get one that's loose, those strings have a lot of pull. And as they pull forward, they act like a wedge and they break your bridge right through here. So that's the main reason you definitely want a good tight fitting saddle. But it also helps, you know, to have it full length because the length also helps spread the sound out along there. So this one here is, you know, a sixteenth of an inch shorter than it needed to be. So anyway, that's my story on the saddle. I'm going to stick to that. Now we're going to try to get it to uh, cut to shape and, and I'll show you what that looks like. Well, back after my lunch break and the first thing I did was I oiled these spots here and I just used regular linseed oil. I didn't want to get the wax in there. I just wanted to keep linseed oil on this. It would probably wouldn't have hurt to use the uh, be good oil with the wax in it, but I decided not to do that in case you ever did want to put some finish over this. That would keep, you know, it, it'll, the, the, you can coat the linseed oil no problem with finish, but with wax, that doesn't coat too well. So anyway, there's that. And uh, then the next thing we just happened to notice, and actually uh, Jim pointed this out, and that is that these tuning keys are loose, and sure enough, quite a few of them are loose, and uh, these screws on the ends are, just need to be snugged up pretty, pretty tight. You can, you can tighten those up fairly tight. Yeah, it's tight. So there was two of them tight. These two were tight, all the rest of them were loose. So, I think that helped that. We've got the, the saddle cut down to shape here, um, but I don't know that it's the right height yet. I'm just, I'm just approximating that that would be the right height. So we're going to put a set of strings on this now and just test it out and see where we're at. So I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Okay, we're going to, we're getting ready to set this up and he's got some new pins and uh, these are Martin type pins. Um, in fact, I think they came from Martin, but yeah, they did. If you look there on the back, but these don't have the groove in them and I, I kind of floored by that, but since they don't have the groove in them, I'm going to put a groove in them. So here we go. The touch of the wind, the clouds roll. 
reminds me of when life was a song. It's the first one. I'm going to test it on the string here. This is the big E string. If it works on this one, it'll work on almost any of them. I don't have the uh, taper on the end of that yet. Well, that's still a little bit tight, and it may just be that the holes are tight. Yeah, it's not going down in there even without the string, so it's a little bit tight. Well, let me get, let me talk to the customer here, and then we'll make our decision. So I've got my reamer out here. We're just we talked to the customer. He Jim says to uh, just ream these out, and that's what we're going to do. So that should work right there. Now it could be that those pins are just a little bit extra big too. Because this, this is actually reaming fairly easy, so this is about my standard size right here, right now. It's, it's not taking much, but that may be uh, all it takes, too. You never know. You know. Some of them don't even need anything, hardly. Like that one doesn't need anything. <laughs> Let me try that now. Well, that makes it pretty darn close there now. Let me try it with the string. I think that's going to work. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Okay, well, we'll move on as we, I'll show you where we're at after we get it a little further along. Okay, I have got the uh, strings attached at this end down here that you can't see on camera. And uh, got all the pins working and all that. So now we're going to uh, string the guitar up. And I thought I'll just take this opportunity to show you my stringing method again. Now on the bass side, I do it a very simple way. I just put the string in the notch. I pull it up on the inside of the post, wrap it around there, go over the top of the string, wrap it around again like that. So you, you just basically have a wrap and a half to two wraps and then you run this right back through over the top of all the strings. So the, your first wrap then is at the very bottom and that's what you want. You want your strings to, uh, to be wrapped. In other words, the string itself should be at the bottom of the post. So now it's already tight, so all it takes is just a few turns and you don't need a string winder or anything. So basically you're tight, you're done, and all you have to do then is just cut the string off right at the top of the post and you're good to go. And the reason I like to see you cut the string off right at the top of the post, uh, for one it's a safety thing so it's not sticking up, for two it's a sound thing um, so that it doesn't vibrate and rattle and make all kinds of noise. So again just right like that, really, really very simple. And you try to get about two wraps, one and a half to two wraps, and then you just go back around on top, pull it up tight like that. You're already done. And you can't hardly do it any faster. You cut your string off right at the top. And it's all great except for the fact that I put the wrong string on the wrong post. I can't believe I did that. So, back up and punt. Even I can make a mistake. Well, I'm not going to try to hide my mistake. I put the wrong one in the wrong place. I think what happened was I was working all these pins and everything and uh, laid this string down. And when I reached over to pick it back up, I picked up the wrong one and stuck it in that hole is what I think I did. But stuff happens. If that was the worst mistake I ever made, I'm in real good shape. So all that does is give you another look at how I do this. I'm going to since this string went on that one, it's plenty long to reuse here, so I'm just going to reuse it and put it back in here. So no big harm done, other than it's just a little kink, so it's just a little harder to get it through there. And I just need a pliers or something to pull it with, because it's a little short. And then just go up like that, like I said, and you're done. You got her tightened up. And for the haters watching this that are going to make the mean comments, I say I'm proud that you've never made a mistake. That's all I got to say. Oh, we laugh for the song. We dance and we sing. We laugh for the song. But it's So those three I do all the same way on the bass side. I do them all identical. 
Now on the treble side, I do that differently. So now I'm gonna show you how I do the treble side. On the treble side, I do it almost, I do it similarly, but it is different. So on the treble side, I go on the inside like this, and I leave a little loop here with my thumb. I go through the hole like so, and I go back around the outside like this, around the outside like so, go back up under the string like that, pull it tight, and then lift it up. And then, and then I walk the string back and it's tight. And that locks the string in where it cannot pull out. These little strings can pull out if you use the other method. However, if you wrap it a few more times, you can use the same method on both sides. But rather than wrap it several times, I just do it this way and I lock it in and I'm just 100% confident that that will never slip with that lock in there that way. Of course, I did leave a little extra slack in this one so I could use a string winder on this side. I could have left a little less slack. I left a little more than I typically leave, but that's okay. Once again, I go through the hole from the inside out. Try not to leave as much slack this time, like that much. Go back under the string Pull it up like that and you're done. Just bring it back and tighten it up and you're good. And again, I'm just going to use the string winder mostly because my hands hurt to twist. And we've only got one more string to put on. And you can see by this method that it does go very quickly. do that. So you can see all of them are up good and tight and they're all wound what you call down the post meaning that the string itself is at the bottom of the post and you always want that. Okay now we're going to start uh, tuning this up a little bit and then we're going to start checking the action and seeing what we have to do. We're going to check the action up here at the first fret as well. Okay I just tuned this up and I'm hearing some extra sounds that shouldn't be there. If you can hear that or not, it's making an extra little buzzy sound. This, this one's kind of dead, kind of dead flat. And this one's kind of a little weird buzzy flat kind of something too. Now, quite easily, it could just be this saddle. I don't think that it is because I think I've got enough angle on there that it's the last place it's touching is the front edge and I'm pretty sure the saddle's not the problem so I'm going to kind of rule that out for the moment. I'm going to turn my attention, the fact that we're hearing it open, I'm going to test it closed and see if I'm still hearing it. Sounds clearer there. I think they're better closed, so that would tell me that it's either the nut or it's this first fret. Something's, something's going on. I kind of think it's the nut. Now, what, how could the nut affect the sound and how could it affect the tone? Well, it can affect it two or three ways. One, if, if it's not on a consistent angle this way, and I'm just being real, you know, I'm ex exact about that. It has to be an exact angle. Doesn't really matter what the angle is, but it has to be one continuous angle. It can't be, you know, like this, and it can't, uh, it definitely can't be on an angle, and I'm exaggerating, like this. Um, it, because it'll buzz down in, in these uh, slots, that's problem number one, is just making sure it's a consistent angle. Problem number two, and, and this is the one I actually suspect may be the problem here, is I think the slots may be too tight and the string may not be sitting all the way in the bottom of the slot. That's a real big problem. Lots of people think they have to make their slot the exact same size as their string, and I'm totally against that. I'm totally uh, uh, for making the slot just a little bit bigger than the string, like about a thousandth or two thousandths bigger than the string. The reason is you can't hardly measure a thousandth or two thousandths. You won't see it with your eye. It's not going to look funny, but that allows the string to get to the bottom of the groove. And that's what you want. So I suspect that's our problem. 
But the first thing I'm going to do is check the actual action here at the first fret and see where we're at. And I just take a light Martin guitar pick. That's, that's what I use as my gauge. It just I like simple, common sense things, and that's one of the ways I do this. I'm looking for a better one. This one's not a very good pick. This one here's a good one. And now th this string is it's just about right. It probably could be just a fraction, fraction lower, but it's so close. This one could be quite a bit lower. This one is pretty close. Go from the other side. This one could, well, this one's could just be a hair lower. This one actually could be lower yet. It's it's probably the highest between the two there for sure. This one's just a hair out of it. So the height of them, I'm just going to say the height is okay on all of them at the moment. And the reason I say that is because they could be held up on the sides of the slots. I don't want to lower anything until I widen these slots. I am pretty sure these strings are pinched in these slots. So I'm going to get set up to, to fix that. So what I'm going to do here is uh, run my fret file down through here. Um, yeah, I can even tell by looking at it, that slot's not right. It, uh, I'm going to have the customer look at this close here. Take a, take a look at that and see how, see how that dark spot is down at that uh -huh. end. It, it's just not right. I can tell you for sure. It should, it, it's been filled. Somebody's put some filler in here. So I'm making it quite a bit bigger. I, I, on the width, I'm not going down. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm actually trying to get the width right so that the string gets to the bottom. And I'm trying to keep my angle about parallel to the peg head. And, and especially, I don't want to cut anything off the back here. I can tell it's just not right. It's not, it's not one continuous angle. I'm going to stop when I get to, the, to this back edge. I don't want to go past this back edge because we're still not there yet. You can still see the stuff that was original is still showing there. A good method for filing is to keep your file level with the peg head. Again, I'm trying not to go deeper. I'm just trying to get one continuous slant and I don't want to go deeper than the, the back end of this. This is where you can really hear a lot of bad noises if you don't do this right. I'm hoping... I'm a little bit concerned about the way they cut this nut. We may have to make a new nut. This is not good, I don't think. At least on, by the first slot already, I'm not real happy with it. Now see how that's almost perfect right there. It's not even moving. It's just like perfect. It's not, it's not forced in there. And yet the string, you're not even pressing it down. And that's just that thin. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty thin. Okay, so I'm still not overly happy with the way that slot looks, but I'm probably going to stop on this one because it's not buzzing or anything or making any weird noises. So I think I'm going to stop on that one before we get it too low. If we get it too low, then we're, we have to make a new nut. And that's where all the time is. We may end up making one, a new one anyway, you just never know. This one is a 42 and the string is a 42, but I'm going to widen it out a little bit by rotating it like this. And I'm trying to keep the angle consistent. We've got plenty of height on this one, so I'm not too worried about taking this one down. So I'm going to go ahead and get that angle all the way on this one. And then again, I'm going to rotate this a little bit just to widen the slot because I don't want it riding up on the, on the sides of that slot. And you can hear how clear that string sounds. Nice and clear, no extra notes or anything. And we're just about the right height here. However, I'm still pressing it down. I can see a couple thousandths movement in that. So we can still go down a hair here and not be any problem at all. But you do have to be careful when you take them down because, boy, you can go past the point of no return really fast. And then you're pretty much making a whole new nut. 
Unless you try to fill them in. I don't do the fill thing. That there is really close. It's moving, but just barely. So we could go a hair lower yet. Again, that string's very clear. You can tell there's nothing getting in the way. And, and yet, listen to this. When I put this in here, see it stops the string vibration. So that means it's exactly where it should be. It's right at the perfect height. I'm not forcing it in there. That is the perfect height right there. So that's exactly where we want it. This one's pretty darn close. I think it's as, about as good as it needs to be. So I think, we're, I think we're good on that one too. So I'm gonna tune these two back up to the pitch. To do this really well, you need to keep everything at pitch. Okay, so now we're on to the next string here, the, this one, and it's just a, just a tiny, tiny bit high, and I mean like barely any. So all I'm gonna do is work on the slot and straighten the slot out. And I'm not really worried about the height of it too much. I don't want to take it down any based on what I'm seeing right there. And again, I can kind of tell there's a pinch going on here. It doesn't look right. I'm a little bit worried anytime I see a pinch going on that the string's going to drop way down. Because all, all I'm doing is getting rid of the pinch points on the sides. And it could actually make the string go way down deeper. And that's not what you want. So I'm going to test it before I go any further. It's, it's still just about where it was, so we didn't drop it a lot. All right, now I'm going to try to get the angle just right. Okay, we got that right. I think we might still be high, so that's good. We're still just a couple thousands high, so I've got a little bit more work I can do in the slot there. Again, it's very clear. That's no extra notes or sounds going on. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be about the right height now, too. That's really close. Boy, you can't even see it move now. So that's, that's real good. And now we're going to move to the other side here. The E string is it's a little bit high. It's not crazy high. But um, I'm worried there's a pinch point. So we're going to go all the way to the E string now. Loosen this one up. This one, I can tell, is a... It, it, they've just tried real hard to keep it super, super tight to the string. And, you know, as long as it's not pinching, that's okay, but I just don't trust them. So I'm going to go ahead and widen it out a little bit. And again, you'll never even see this or realize that it's even any wider at all, but it won't, then you just know it's not pinched. And that's the main thing and you know you're sitting on the bottom of the thing and we got to get rid of those extra overtones. This string had some overtones. We want to get it clear. So this, this will probably make it clear, but we'll see. Okay, I'm going to check the height there first. and We're really close enough. I think we're good enough on the height. But the, the string sounds clearer to me now. I don't hear I don't hear any extra little undertone buzzing thing. I think that sounds good. Compared to this, can you hear the difference? There's like an extra. Zzz. So that, see, I, again, I think it's being pinched right here. That's what I believe. I could be wrong, but that's what I believe. We'll see if it clears it up. This one's a little bit larger than the string, so I don't really have to rotate it, and that's perfectly fine with me. It's only a couple thousands bigger, and you'll never see that, like I said. Yeah, I can tell, again, it's, it's it's not filed right. I can just feel it. Now, now, now I don't feel anything. It just glides. But before it was just catching and everything. So let's check it now before we go any further because again that could cause it to drop down drastically. 
just because it was riding on the sides before, and we could tell that by the sound. Let me look and see if we're gonna be lower. No, we're still plenty high, so we got a lot of room on this one. I'm glad to hear that because this is the string that's got the sound issues, in my opinion. It's already clear, doesn't have that extra fuzz at the end. But we're still high on this string. On the B string, we're still quite high. So we're going to take it down some more. Jim here had said that he, he thought there was a problem with this B string. Well, what I think the problem was, and, and Jim kind of thought maybe it was cut lower, but instead of being cut lower, I think what Jim was hearing was probably that fuzz, that fuzzy sound, and it was making it sound weird, and you probably thought it was buzzing out on these frets or something, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's all it was. It's just that it was locked in there. And I'm pretty sure this is going to clean it up and make it sound perfect. It's a nice clear sound now. Let's see about the height. I think we should be really close. Yep, that's just about perfect. It doesn't move at all when I touch this. It's just absolutely sitting there. All right, so we just got the last string to go is the G string. And again, I think it's got a fuzz. Not too bad. Just a teeny tiny bit of fuzz on it too. So we're gonna get rid of that. This is actually a 28, the string is a 22, and again, you'll never see that difference. Even though it sounds like that's a lot, you'll never see it. And it'll definitely let the string move like it needs to move. When you look at that right now, and you can look at it close, you can't tell that that string, that that slot's any wider than that string because you just can't tell that. Not, when you're just dealing in a few thousandths of an inch, you just can't see it. It's just not going to be there. You can feel it with your fingernail or something, but you can't feel it. I mean, you can't see a thousandth or a two with your eyes very easily anyway. Not the, the average person can't see that. I can tell you that for sure. Now let's just check the G for the height because we may still be high on the G. And we are still just a tiny bit high, so I'm going to knock it down just a little bit more. It can go just a little bit, not very much, but that little bit is all we need. check it one more time that's just about perfect so that nut at the first fret there that is just about as perfect as you can do there, that 16 thousandths pick is just snug in there now you could argue that you could drop this down a little bit more and you could but I'm telling you what 16 thousandths of an inch if you do it right and you get it consistent it feels like a dream it'll feel like it's playing so easy so I'm good with that. Not only that, but it could actually drop a little bit more if we drop it back here some more. And so we're gonna drop this back uh, now. So we're gonna, we're gonna check this end, I should say, and see if we need to drop it a little bit more. I think Jim likes to play low based on what I'm hearing him make his comments. Is, does that sound right, Jim? I'd rather have it low than high. Yeah. Okay, so he, you know, because he was thinking the 90 felt pretty high, and it's, it's right on 90 now, which is basically because I copied the original setup, because I wanted to start someplace a little high. You don't want to start low, because you can't, it's, you can't raise them up. And this one's already pretty good on this side. It's, it's right at 70. We could probably get by with a teeny bit lower here, but not very much. I, I don't feel comfortable sitting in an acoustic up a whole lot lower than this. So I'm going to drop this side here 10 and I'm going to drop this side 5 all the way, you know, and we're just going to, you know, make it work all the way across like that. So what that means is if I'm going to drop this by 10, I have to take 20 off back. I have to take 20 off this side and only 10 off of this side. And that's not very much, but that's what we're going to do.
Okay, so you've seen me do this before, but we really are doing a very minor amount this time. So I'm setting this at 20 thousandths. Now, even at 20 thousandths, you heard me a while ago talking about just a few thousandths difference in the nut, but even at 20 thousandths, see how small that gap is? It's almost nothing, you know? People think that's a lot. It's not, it's very tiny. So I'm just gonna mark on here where 20 thousandths is. And that's it right there. Can you see the mark? And now 10 thousandths is half of that. <laughs> so can I even do 10 thousandths? Oh my gosh. So here we go. So there's 10 thousandths, just barely scratching the edge. And so how do I fix that? How do I take off that much? I just walk it over to my sander and walk it into the sander till, I, till those marks just basically touch. That's all you do. Okay, I cut this down and I have not yet checked the height. So let's check the height real quick again. I cut it down 20 thousandths on this side, 10 thousandths on this side, which reduces to half of that when you get down here. So this should be 10 thousandths lower, which means it should be 80 thousandths. And that's right on the money. If anything, it's a hair lower than that. It's like 88, 89 thousandths. Um, or I mean 79, it's like 79 to 80 thousandths. So it's, it's right on the edge of the lowest that I would go. This, I don't want to be more than 60 at the lowest and it's about 65-ish. So that's about where I think it should be. So that part's good. Here's what it, here's what it sounds like when you pick it. And, and again, it may not be perfectly tuned, but it's close. Let's check the intonation and I don't know where that's going to be because I haven't tried to mess with that yet but let's see where we're at so let's you can see the tuner there I think and you can see it better than I can actually three or four thousandths, uh, three or four cents high uh, when we note it. Let's check it again. It's really hard to get it perfectly centered. four to five cents sharp. So we could take this back a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is just mark that on the saddle here um, that I could, and I'm just gonna mark right here that I could, you know, take this back a little bit. And then we'll go to the next string and we'll check it. Note it. Now that one's a little more sharp. That one's almost 10 cents sharp. Ten cents or so sharp. So we definitely want to take this one back. And the way I'm going to denote that is I'm going to put my black mark back a little further on this one. So we're going to take this one back a little bit more. All right. So now let's ch check the uh, D string. five cents. I'm going to mark it like I marked the E up toward the front here. And then we're going to go on to the next one, which is your G. It's 10 or so cents sharp, so I'm going to mark it toward the back, meaning that we got to move it way back. And let's try the E and see where it's at. It's just maybe a fraction, just a really tiny amount sharp, but it's so small it's not even funny. So I'm just going to put a real thin mark there. 
And now I'm going to take this saddle out and I'm going to do some filing to make it um, work better. Well, I know you guys want to see it on camera, so I'm going to zoom it in here and show you. Now, the, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's pretty dang close. It's definitely improved. Really close right there. Really close. See, really close. Every one of them is real close. Almost perfect. That one, yeah, it's pretty dang close. It's almost impossible to check a B string because I don't think anybody's ever been able to tune one. <laughs> Pretty dang close though. It, very close. So the B string's really close too, but it, it's just hard to uh, get a B string to cooperate. Right there, see? So it's really, really close. Anyway, that's about as good as that puppy can be set up. The action is crazy low. The frets are super polished. The action at the first fret is just near perfect. The strings are wound on there just about as good as it can be done. The overall bridge appearance is about as good as it can be with these new uh, pins and everything. So it's up in very, very good shape. Well, my friends, we got this Martin guitar up in, I think, tip-top shape. At least I did about as good as I think I can do. I don't, I can't think of anything else I could do to it to make it play any better. So how do you feel about it, Jim? Well, I wish we could teach it how to play better, but we're working <laughs> on that too. Oh, this thing is, I don't know that I've ever played any guitar, acoustic guitar, especially that plays any easier than this does now. Well, good. I mean, the strings are right down near the frets, and yeah. there's no, there's just no, there's no pain pushing them down at all. Well, good. And if you yeah. want a bar way up here, yeah. it's just as easy as it is playing down well, here. Well, there's just a ton of people out there that believe the myth that you cannot set up a Martin guitar to play as easy as the other guitars. And I'm telling you, a Martin guitar ain't no different than any other. You can set up any of them the same way. You just got to get after it and do it. <laughs> well, they, Martin says these are the best. Yeah, uh, well, I I don't and, disagree and, with them. I think they're pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah, Denny Zager says these are the best. I've yeah. got both of them, and I like yeah. them both. They're, I like them both different. Yeah, they're, Zager's are great guitars, too. Yes, they are. There's a lot of good ones out there, though. I mean, you know, I really don't try to play a favoritism on them. I'm kind of partial to Martins just because they're so prevalent in bluegrass. But, but they're no real uh, huge better than any other one. I mean, like Taylor's got some really good ones. Zager's got some really good ones. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of other ones out there that we're leaving out that, are, that have some really good guitars, too. So, Man, I'm tickled to death. But you're happy with it? Oh, yeah. Well, let's play a tune. Let's just celebrate here. me 
play till I play it is my problem. <laughs> you think you practice things, but I never do. I just, just ad lib as I go. <laughs> sometimes it works great and sometimes not so much. Thanks to Rose's String Works. You like it, huh? I love it. I don't like it. I love it. Well, good. Good. I, it, it, it definitely has the potential. I, and when I heard it, the, the moment I heard it, I went like, wow, there's something not sounding right. And 90% of the not sounding right was in the nut on that thing. It, the nut had the strings pinched. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't pinch your nuts. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good. I appreciate you coming that far for the setup. So I hope you all enjoyed this uh, setup video. And I think there was a lot of good tips in there, especially about how to file the uh, nut slots. Thank you so much for watching.